This is the Church of St. Paul in the Desert. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The only time we get to read about the cleansing of the temple in the new lectionary is on this Sunday in the second year of Lent, and we always will read it from John's Gospel. And that's a good thing, because Jesus is not being as angry as he is in the other Gospels right now. He's not accusing them of being thieves and robbers. He's just saying they're being business people. I'll let you figure out which is... No, I I won't. (laughs) But the truth is, is that they were doing those... Um, money changers and the people selling the cattle and the doves. They weren't actually in the temple. They were in the outer courtyard. And they weren't doing anything wrong. They were actually providing a good service. But Jesus was trying to get them to understand that he was making a change, that God was making a change, that the temple that had become centered around sacrifices and um, ritualized offerings was being shifted. And the shift was that the people of God were no longer being formed around the temple, but they would in the future be formed around Jesus. And that was his message for them. And the message for us around this is is that even as we are being formed around Jesus, Jesus is getting us ready to be the people around Jesus whom the people of the world form when they seek to find what God is doing. So from the temple to Jesus to the people of God, because Jesus said, wherever two or three are gathered together in my name, I am in their midst. So that's the progression. You kind of got a double dose today of the Ten Commandments, didn't you? You probably know them all by heart now. Um, we read them on a regular basis for most of the Sundays in Lent in a very ritualized and stylized way from the prayer book. And then on this Sunday, we read them as God is delivering them to Moses, who is then going to take them down to the people. And The reason that I want to focus on this is because I thought this would be a great opportunity for a stewardship sermon. I'm waiting to see how many people get up to leave. Um, But the reality here is that we're not dealing with stewardship that's focused on money, probably quite the opposite in this particular one. What we're dealing with is God is forming the people of God as a community who are stewards of justice. And one of, and at the heart of these Ten Commandments is a sign that God is incredibly concerned about justice and the way that we care for one another. Just as I mentioned that Jesus is talking about a church that's being formed around him, and when the church is formed, Jesus is present, in the reading from Exodus, The church is being formed around folks who are connected to God, but are also connected to the people around them, and are even connected to the very earth beneath their feet. This is the heart of justice. The heart of injustice is to be so disconnected that one is oblivious to what's happening to the people around you, or what's happening to the earth and the creation that all of us depend upon. Now, um, I forgot my little note here. The part of the reading from the Exodus, I'm not going to go through all of the commandments. I'm wanting to focus particularly on the fourth commandment, the Sabbath. In today's reading, it says, remember the Sabbath day and keep, and, and make it holy, keep it holy. Now, if you look at the way that that lesson is organized, uh, when it comes to worshiping other gods and having idols, there's about six, I think, six or seven lines of description. 
and God seems very intense about that. When it comes down to murder, there's not even a full half line. Don't do any murder. Evidently, it didn't seem like there was a real big question. Nobody raised their hand and said, Excuse me, Lord, are you sure murdering is out? But when it comes to the Sabbath, there's five and a half lines. There's a lot of description. God is, I think, talking to a lot of type A people. And he's saying to them, In six days I created the heavens, the earth, the seas, the sky, everything that's in it. And on the seventh I rested. You should too. Now, as Episcopalians and probably as American Christians, we have some language we have to get straight first of all. Today is not the Sabbath. Today is the Lord's Day. The Christian church made a shift probably a hundred years after Jesus and stopped worshiping in the temple for the most part, and, or worshiping in the synagogues on the Sabbath, and began to worship on Sunday, the Lord's Day, in honor of and as a regular remembrance of Jesus' resurrection on the third day. Now, in English, it's kind of difficult, but if you speak Spanish, it's really easy to understand. What's the word in Spanish for Sunday? Domingo, the Lord's Day. What's the Spanish word for Saturday? Sabado, Sabbath. Okay, so we've got Sabbath as taking a day of Sabbath and everything else. And Sabbath is usually translated as rest. Um, In this particular reading, it is used in a couple different ways. It's talking about people who um, make the Sabbath holy and who take a rest. But it's also an offering. It is a Sabbath for the Lord. So I would suggest that one of the things we need to do is to translate a little bit differently. When we translate it as rest, we we almost immediately go to relax, and then we go to play, and then we go to vacation. And we're really thinking that the Sabbath is all about making sure nobody works too hard. If, on the other hand, you translate Sabbath as desist, God created the heavens and the earth on the six days, and on the seventh day, God desisted. God didn't go play. He didn't kick back in a chair. God did nothing. He desisted. And then the commandment says, and that's the way you should be too. Get all your work done in six days and then stop. Now, I have to tell you, of all the commandments, I think this is the most difficult one for me to manage. Murder, I've got no real real problem with murder. Um, But when it comes to stopping, when it comes to disconnecting, when it comes to not just relaxing and being refreshed, when it comes to really not doing all the things that I'm used to doing, I have a real hard time. So what I'm going to suggest is something that maybe maybe I can learn from myself, I can try, and maybe as a community we can. Just as the gospel is about a community being formed around Jesus instead of a community that's being formed around specific um, standardized rituals, I'm suggesting that we might also be a community that is formed around the justice inherent in Sabbath. There is justice inherent in Sabbath. Um, uh, Sabbath shows up first time in Genesis, second time in Exodus, and it shows up again in Deuteronomy when Moses is giving them a repeat of the Ten Commandments. Now you might ask, Why did Moses need to repeat the Ten Commandments just three chapters later? I think it's because they were forgetting. (laughs) And they had to be reminded. And they wrote them a little bit differently, at least a few of them. In this one, they wrote a little bit different. This is uh, Deuteronomy 5, chapter uh, chapter 5, verse 12. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, as the Lord your God has commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath 
to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your ox, nor your donkey, or any of your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns, so that your male and female servants may rest as you do. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. Remember comes up again. The first way that we can organize ourselves as a community of justice around the Sabbath is by remembering the Sabbath. 